my name is Jürgen Pabel. Um, during the earlier talk, there was mention about um, that there aren't really that many solutions for, like, you know, actually protecting data, or that. Uh, well, no, that, that's not true. Um, that protecting data stuff isn't, uh, you know, doesn't uh, receive that much attention. And I would like to get your attention on something that can help protect data for now. Um, it's about protecting HTTP session data. So you have some web server, some application, internet, you've hardened the system, etc. cetera, um, audit the application, um, users connect to the web server, um, the application logic takes here, whatever uh, data is persisted goes in here, and session date is usually stored in another database, like memcache, you know, whatever technology you choose to employ. And this talk is about protecting this data down here. Not the persistent data in the database, but the session data. So, um, what you have is um, web application use cookies to maintain state. So, you have maybe like a, um, for PHP, like a PHP session ID, and this uh, ID is sent with every request. So when the user is logged in, based on this session ID, the server knows which user it is. So, um, okay, so this picture is supposed to show on the left-hand side that you have uh, several web clients, browsers, each has their own session. Um, the session ID gets transported to the web server, the web server gives it to the application server, the application server looks in its session database, looks up by some key value, so session ID A looks up in the key column, finds the right session ID and finds the session data. So here, for session A, user Jürgen. The problem with this is that someone who has access to this session database, they can just A, take the session IDs here, copy them into their own browser, and they're uh, logged in as that user. Um, B, they can extract this data, which might be stuff that you would want, uh, want to be protected from whoever has access to this system. So assuming for this scenario, you have uh, maybe uh, like a database ad admin who could administers this database but has no access to the web server or the application server itself. So what SSDS, Secure Session Data Storage, is, is for one, it um, provides for a mechanism to secure the uh, session ID. So whenever the client sends the session ID, the module hashes it, a storage ID is derived, and the storage ID is then used as the key value, like the key in the database. So someone who can access this database, all they see is the hash of the session ID. They can no longer take the session ID out of the database, copy it in their browser. So essentially, they cannot impersonate a user. They can still access this data in this configuration. So there's another option implemented or perceived, which is encryption of this data. So essentially, the session ID is uh, hashed. That is then the encryption key, the data stored in the storage database is then encrypted using this key. The encryption key itself is hashed again, and that is the um, hash that's used for looking up the data in the storage database. So um, there are a couple issues, like one is encryption. Um, you have one key that's constant for the session, but you have multiple data states. You might have a data state, user not logging, uh, user logged in, um, user submitted a credit card information. So all this um, is um, different data that needs to be encrypted using the same key. And cryptographically, you need to, um, for encryption things like this, you need to provide an initialization vector that makes each encryption run for each state change uh, unique. Um, so what you can do is you can just generate this initialization vector uh, randomly. Of course, then the server at some point will have problems with uh, generating uh, random numbers. The entropy pool uh, is probably going to be empty real quick. So what this concept does is it takes the um, session ID, concatenates the current timestamp, and then hashes that. And that's an unpredictable and unique um, initialization vector that's then used for encryption. 
So what I implemented so, so far is a PHP extension. Um, PHP for saving all this cookie data or the session data, uh, you have what's called a safe handler. And um, so what you do to activate this in PHP, uh, if you have the module is um, say SSDS is the safe handler, implement it in this module. And then you need to tell SSDS where to save the data to. So like maybe a memcache, maybe file system, whatever. And then you have configure options down here that actually control the mode and the algorithms that are used by the module. So um, the uh, hashing algorithm that makes it from a session ID to a storage ID um, is this one. This is the encryption algorithm. This is the hash that um, derives from the session ID encryption key if you use it. And then you have another in, um, algorithm down here for uh, derivating the uh, the initialization vector. So I don't think there's a time for demo, but what it does is essentially, if you look at the um, simple application, PHP application, with this session ID and the storage backend being the file system, then you have, for example, a file var lib PHP and then sesh underscore and the exact session ID. So this could be taken and um, used to be impersonate a user. And this is actually the content of the session. So you have a variable time, which is top, uh, type integer, has this value. You have a second value, data, type string, length one, value x. So you see this ID of the session, and you see the session itself, the data itself. Then after activating the module, this is the hashed session ID, no longer of use for anyone, except for the browser itself, the user of the application. And this right here is the encrypted session data. So the encrypted session data goes down to um, this equation sign. So it's base64 encoded. The hash mark um, separates the encrypted data from the initialization vector that needs to be um, employed when decrypting the data. And every time the data changes, um, you know, this file gets rewritten. So every time this value changes and this value, the initialization vector changes. Um, PHP SSDS is stable, audited, no security flaws are found. Um, Java SSDS for Tomcat is work in progress, early work in progress, and if anyone wants to implement it for any other technology, just uh, come talk to me. I'm done. <laughs>